Story continued from Dino Kyrus episode. On the highlands of prehistoric Mongolia, a mother dinosaur is guarding her eggs. She is an oviraptor, a family of dinosaurs that usually don't grow over two meters long. However, her kind is a huge exception. She is a gigantoraptor, and at a colossal eight meters long and two tons, she is by far the largest oviraptor, who now stand tall amongst the Cretaceous giants. At this time of year, she spends most of her day incubating her eggs laid in a three meter circle. Each of them is 50 centimeters long and will take another month to hatch, and though they aren't hidden, they have their large and aggressive mother to guard them. Resting under the shade of the trees, she has chosen to nest close to a cliff with a steep drop off so that predators can't approach her from at least one side. Though at her size, there aren't many predators that would approach her, even when she is vulnerable. It isn't carnival she is worried about, however. Over the past few days, the screams of an infuriated Therizinosaurus have echoed throughout the forest. Something about its cries have unsettled the brooding mother, and the whole area is on edge, not wanting to run into whatever was making those noises. The female Gigantoraptor with her head rested on the ground feels the vibrations of footsteps approaching. It is heavy, and wasn't making any attempt to conceal itself. Lifting her head up, she saw the foliage to her left begin to be pushed aside, and through it came a large, battle-scarred Therizinosaurus. Breathing heavily, its eyes darted around, looking for threats, or something to attack. There was clearly something affecting this individual. Males usually get pumped full of testosterone during the mating season, and become more aggressive, but this was far beyond what was normal. The brooding mother tried to remain hidden, but her large size meant she stuck out like a sore thumb, and was easily seen even by the poor-sided Therizinosaur. Locking in on her, the angry giant advanced, letting out a challenging cry. Instinct kicked in, and the mother rose to her feet and moved to defend her eggs. The Gigantoraptor flapped her arms, spreading her feathers in a fret display, while jabbing forward with her head, making furious barks. Usually this was enough, but this new fret continued towards her, so she sidestepped and lured away the wounded Therizinosaurus into the more open area. Her clutch was safe, but now she was well within the range of the angry dinosaur's huge 1.5 meter long claws. The angry male swung at her, but she evaded backwards, trying to get away, but the belligerent attacker kept advancing and hit her across the neck with one arm and then across the body with the other. Only the tips of his claws were sharp in any way, so the Gigantoraptor avoided being cut, but the Therizinosaurus still weighed five tons and was throwing it around wildly. The only reason the female wasn't thrown to the ground was because her aggressor was wounded from previous fights but pushed onwards by overproduction of testosterone. The Gigantoraptor lunged forward and bit down on the aggressor's neck. She then pulled backwards and ripped out a mass of feathers and a line of flesh, adding to the mass of previous wounds. As the Therizinosaurus recoiled, she sidestepped and slashed her claws down the giant's shoulder and side. The angry male felt a new surge of anger tear through him, and delivered a furious backhand across the Gigantoraptor's skull, sending her crashing to the ground. Dazed and confused, she looked up and saw the blurry body of the Therizinosaurus as it raised both arms into the air, preparing to bring down all six of its massive claws down to impale her. A deafening cry came from behind the Therizinosaurus, and out of nowhere, a second Gigantoraptor leapt onto the Thero's back grabbing onto him with its long arms and biting with its sharp beak. It was the mother's mate, returning from foraging, just in the nick of time. With a fury to match the Therizinosaurus's, the male kicked, clawed, and bit into the aggressor's hide, pulling him off of his mate and forcing the herbivore to the ground. The Thero swung himself around, forcing the newcomer off of him, but when he went to swing with his right arm, his claws got impaled in a tree. As he realized his mistake, he felt the female Gigantoraptor bite into his leg. Battered and bloodied, she was still in the fight. 
The male Gigantoraptor violently pecked at the huge herbivore's head, forcing the giant to block with his other arm. The attack stopped momentarily, but when he lowered his arm, both Gigantoraptor charged him and tackled him so hard, his arm was wrenched out of the tree and dislocated. The Therizinosaurus cried out and stumbled across the ground. Days of fighting and unhealed wounds suddenly all weighed down on him. He looked at his limp arm, and then to the two Gigantoraptor staring him down. The beast drew in a deep breath and let out one final, ear-splitting scream that cut through the whole forest. But the Gigantoraptor were unfazed, and together they rushed forward and slammed the Therizinosaurus backwards, right over the cliff. The giant was still screaming as he toppled over the edge and fell for a few seconds when his scream was cut off and replaced by the sharp snap of bones. The two parents peered over the edge of the cliff. Below them, the broken and mangled body of the Therizinosaurus lay amongst the rocks. His reign of terror finally ended. The old male had been afflicted by overproduction of testosterone, and due to his large size, no other males had been able to put him down. In fact, he had killed two other males in his search for mates, as well as killing or injuring many other dinosaurs in his rampage. Finally, however, the pair of Gigantoraptor had finished him, and brought a relative peace back to the forest. The wounded female would now have to rest likely for weeks. Fortunately, she could rely on her mate to step in for her while she healed, and they would both live to see their eggs hatch. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the Oviraptor that broke the mold, Gigantoraptor. Gigantoraptor was originally discovered in 2005 in Mongolia. This holotype is the only confirmed specimen so far, but is fairly complete. It grew up to 8 meters long, stood 3.5 meters tall at the hip, and weighed up to 2 tons. Gigantoraptor is the largest of the Oviraptor family. In fact, it is three times larger and 35 times heavier than the second largest Oviraptor. This makes it a very odd dinosaur in general, given that most of its family barely broke the one meter range. Though we only have the lower jaw of Gigantoraptor, this is enough to identify it as an Oviraptorid, but also as the largest beaked theropod of all time. The lower jaw was 46 centimeters in length and toothless, most Oviraptor jaws are built for crushing, but Gigantoraptor's jaws are also designed for shearing. Good for cutting through plants, but perhaps meat as well. Gigantoraptor seems to be designed for selective browsing, but scientists put forward that since it was so large, and the area it lived in was quite arid, it would have had to have been a bulk feeder in order to sustain itself. If so, it likely had a large gut like a Therizinosaur. Scientists also believe that Gigantoraptor would have occasionally been carnivorous to supplement its diet, likely preying on small dinosaurs when it needed to. Based on the depth of the jaws, it may have also had a large tongue to aid in food processing. Its head was held on the end of a long neck, which helped it when browsing, but wouldn't have been as useful for hunting prey that exceeded a certain size, supporting the theory that if it did hunt, it went after small animals. Like other oviraptors, it had long arms with long digits, which are not the norm for theropods of its size. This would allow it to manipulate objects rather well, whether it be moving plants or seizing prey. The legs are also quite strange. Not only are they very long, but both the tibia and femur are around the same length, at about 1.1 meters. So it wasn't a sprinter. It seems more adapted for an animal that would make large trips around its arid home in order to feed itself. Still, it could have potentially been capable of reaching high speeds with its long stride. The length of the legs is interesting, because when theropods grow larger, their legs usually get more shorter and more robust to accommodate their weight, whereas Gigantoraptor seems to have not done away with the long limbs, even as it grew to such a large size. On the matter of weight, the vertebra did have sponge-like structures around them that likely helped reduce the animal's total body weight. There is a lot of debate as to whether Gigantoraptor had feathers, as many of its smaller relatives had them, 
On one hand, Gigantoraptor may have been so large that it didn't need the feathers for insulation. On the other hand, it may have kept them for use in display. After all, there are plenty of modern birds that have display feathers that actually inhibit them, like peacocks. One theory put forward is that Gigantoraptor may have been mostly naked, with some feathers on the arms or tail for use in display, and for covering eggs. Speaking of eggs, though we only have one skeleton of an adult, we do have intact nests of Gigantoraptor. These were found even before the Gigantoraptor holotype was dug up. They were nests that were 3 meters in diameter, with 50 centimeter eggs placed in pairs, and a large space in the middle of the nest. Since there was nothing covering the eggs, it is hypothesized that Gigantoraptor would sit in the vacant center of the nest and cover the eggs with the rest of its body and its feathers. This would allow it to lie comfortably without crushing its eggs. Studies done on the bones of the holotype have calculated that the individual was 11 years old when it died, and it reached sexual maturity at 7. That means it would have put on around 130 to 140 kilograms every year Reaching maturity at 7 is a very fast growth rate, even amongst theropods. And though technically an adult, it's likely this specimen still had some growing to do. With only one specimen, however, proper averages for a species' size and weight are difficult to calculate. Gigantoraptor is a very unique creature. On one hand, it looks like someone took the regular Oviraptor and kept hitting the increased size button until the button broke. It's also one of those species that scientists and paleo artists especially seem to want to go wild with. Want to have it without feathers? That's all good, mate. Want to cover it in feathers? Go right ahead. Want to give it crazy turkey-like waddles? Yeah, chuck them on. Want to make a giant oviraptor cassowary? That's bloody beautiful, mate. That's the fun of paleontology. If you don't know, make an educated guess. And just because something doesn't have direct evidence doesn't mean you can't speculate. But what do you think of Gigantoraptor? Do you like the more naked look, prefer it with some feathers, or go absolutely bonkers and make it to look like a 4 meter tall turkey? Let me know what lesser known dinosaur you'd like me to do a breakdown on next, and until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.